she is. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Miss Bonnie. How are you? Hi, how are you? Oh, great. No, I uh, I think I hit uh, hit the first link and it said it wasn't valid. Then I found the second link. So anyway, okay, cool. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> cool. Okay, Mr. Daniel. Well, hello, this, sir. This is the Hollywood Times with Mr. Daniel Watt and Miss Bonnie with Shalakti. <laughs> Shalakti from Belay for Kids. This amazing woman and this amazing man have built a movie based on people with disabilities and how art helps them. Okay. Mr. Daniel Watt. Yes, sir. Tell me more about why you decided to become an independent producer. Well, it started back when I, when I was 15 years old, I started out as a dancer. And when I moved to California, I got into two dance companies. And then as I got older, I still wanted to be involved in, um, in theater and production. So I became a teacher and then a choreographer. And then I got the job of department head of a conservatory where I oversaw the dance department, drama, drama and musical theater. And after I did about 30 shows, um, I worked at Columbia. Um, I decided to move into film. And I was lucky to get hired by Columbia Pictures for five years and then Simon Cowell for five years. But I didn't want to tell stories that were scripted. I wanted to tell real stories, stories that had a, um, a purpose and a meaning. So I thought the only way I can tell the stories that I want to do is to become an independent producer and then just tell them myself. And that's how we got to where we are now and the stories in Everybody Dance. Yeah, how did you come up with the idea to make a film about kids with disabilities and the arts? Well, my initial idea was to try to um, show how the arts can help in everyday life, the determination, the dedication, the commitment. So that was my initial idea, but I didn't have my way into the movie. And I had a dream. I had a dream um, about uh, two girls that I taught 17 years ago and they had autism. And I thought, well, that's weird. Why did I have this dream about Fran and her daughters? And I didn't give it any more thought. I didn't know anything about autism back then. I just taught my class the way I always did. And, you know, I asked Fran, the mom, if there were, was anything I needed to know special, uh, you know, in regards to her daughters. And she said, no, one of them was sensitive to touch. So just correct her, but don't touch her. But I just kept teaching the class the way it was uh, any other day and with any other student. And I had that dream again, a second time, two weeks later. And I thought, this is, God poking me saying, this is your movie. I'm telling, this is the movie you should make. So I trusted myself and then I did some research and I found this amazing woman, Bonnie and her amazing studio, Ballet for All Kids. And after her and I chatted a few times, once we met in person for coffee and I walked in that dance studio, I said, these are, this is the story I need to tell. And what a story it is. Oh, thank you. What did you learn about feminists? What did I, well, you know, I, what I actually, I was reminded of something that I knew, but you know, we, how we forget things as we, we get older or we don't. Um, I, I, re, I was reminded that anything is possible. Um, I reflected back uh, on these kids. You know, there were times when I was filming this that it got tough. It was really tough to finish it and uh, to come up with money and just everything involved in it. And I reflected back on these kids and they became my inspiration and my motivation to keep going when I thought, you know, I just don't wanna do this anymore. And I think that as in all aspects of our life, 
we can learn from each other. We can always learn from someone else. So to me, it was like a full circle moment. It was everything that I learned when I was a dancer, I then had to apply to make this movie. I had to apply the determination, the discipline and focus to finish the film. How did you pick which kids to follow? Well, in the beginning, we I was following either 10 or 11 kids. Um, that felt comfortable sharing their stories on camera uh, and gave us access to their houses and stuff. And I fell in love with all of them. So when it came time to edit, I trusted my editor, Isaiah Camp, because I loved all the kids at the studio and I knew I wouldn't be able to choose. So I let him decide and he narrowed it down from there on who had the best story arcs, you know, what translated best from the classroom did i what did i capture on film made the best story uh did i get their real life story on film so he actually uh did it for me because i i couldn't have narrowed it down to 90 minutes i wouldn't need a man <laughs> is there a standout moment that touched you while filming you know it actually that there's a moment that uh, changed my life and but it wasn't it was because of the filming but not filming uh, it was in December and Bonnie and I I'd been going up there I think since like September August or September Bonnie um, but I went to Target and I was doing my last minute Christmas shopping and I walked by a girl on the floor having a tantrum and her mom and I in my mind I just thought oh I wonder if she's on the spectrum and I just kept shopping and when I got in the car, I started to cry. I thought I didn't judge her. I, there were no preconceived ideas. I just, my mind went, oh, I wonder if she's on the spectrum. And I just went on with my daily life and my shopping. And I thought, that's it. That's what this movie can do. If I do this movie right, maybe somebody else will get the same experience that I did and that switch will flip in their brain and they'll be like, oh, I wonder if he's on the spectrum and then just move on. That's quite an answer to the question. <laughs> what would you like the audience to take away from your film? I think if if everybody would if we would just start focusing on similarities, um, I think at Bonnie at at Ballet for All Kids, what is amazing is everybody comes together in that classroom, and they're they're all the same. They walk in, and everybody has the one purpose and one main goal, and that is to learn to dance. And we all have obstacles in our lives that we have to work around and, and try to figure through. And, you know, some people might experience the, the world in a different way, but if we embrace all these differences, it actually can help us see the wonders of dancing individually, but then also dancing to the rhythm of life together. Oh, that sounded really smart. <laughs> I like it. I'm glad we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to remember that one. <laughs> All right, Miss Funny. Yes. When did you get the idea to start this? I started Ballet for All Kids uh, 16 years ago. So I started it, um, I've been in the field of working with uh, adults and children with various developmental disabilities my entire career. Um, my daughter um, was born, she, she's a you know, typical kid. And I remember walk, rocking her to sleep one night and I thought, oh, what if, what if she had you know, CP or autism or a developmental disability, where would I put her in ballet? Because Growing up, ballet was so instrumental in my life. Like it gave me all of the self-confidence and discipline and, and it's really helped me be successful in life. 
And I thought, well, gosh, where would I put her in ballet? And and so I searched and and did you know did an internet search and everything, and there was nothing out there. And I thought, well, that's a tragedy. Like that's just not not okay. Like everybody should have the ability to access dance. So um, I created um, yeah I created the Shalakti method and I created a ballet for all kids, and really said you know let's play on everybody's strengths right? Everybody has strengths. And how do we just make ballet accessible to everyone? Well, we, we, we teach it in a, a multi uh, modality way, right? Where we teach visual learners and kinesthetic learners and, and imaginative learners all at the same time in the same space and, and really teach them classical ballet technique. And so that's really was, so my daughter was my inspiration um, and, you know, just and ballet and just my belief that, that you know, uh, the arts are, are, are definitely something that has to, um, is, is the great equalizer, yes? Like, and everyone should have access to, to the arts because they benefit everybody. How has this experience helped the helpers or the kids who helped? My volunteers? Yes. Oh my gosh. I I can't even I begin to tell you how, how influential, and it's not necessarily my program, it's the kids, right? Like, so I teach in, in the Los Angeles area and I teach in very, you know, uh, uh, I teach in Agora Hills and I've taught in Encino. These are very affluent areas, right? Most of my volunteers start coming to me because they need their community service hours. And they are from a lot of them from very wealthy private schools and, and, you know, have parents that are in the industry and parents that, you know, are, are, are pretty um, affluent and things. And they have a really, you know, high school mindset of like, of what's important and what isn't important, right? And they walk into my classroom and the kids do not care, right? The kids don't care what you look like, how you're dressed, who your parents are, how many people, like what your social media presence is. Like they don't care about any of that. And my kids have the ability just to, to, to be extremely genuine, right? And they, they have this ability to accept people for what, what and who they really are. And so I think that kind of love and acceptance for high schoolers is just, it's crazy because it's the one time in their life that they can just, you know, I, I do believe when you focus on others, there's a huge give back in life. And so for them, it's 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 just, I, I can tell you it's life-changing. And, and I know that because of, of, of their experience volunteering, a lot of them have gone into, you know, becoming uh, developmental pediatricians, becoming occupational therapists, becoming special ed teachers, becoming, um, you know, just teachers, uh, 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 speech pathologists and things like that, because they want to continue the work that they've been doing with, with my, those, those kids. And so a lot of them are like, okay, this is, this is what I want to do. These are the kind of folks that I want to be around. So it's been, I think, hugely impactful. And I think it's actually shown them what kind of human being they can be, <laughs> right? That, that they can be kind and, and loving and compassionate and the, the payback for those kind of, uh, of kind of actions in their life will, will give them back tenfold of, of the kind of selfish narcissism that we see so, so much throughout this world, right? So I think for them, it's, it's, it really helps shape them. I, I hope for the better. Well, and, and Bonnie, the one thing that I noticed, like you said that uh, when we, before we start, or when we started filming, you, you, you said to me, some of them might change, you know, they might, you know, they might only have like six, seven hours of community service and nobody left. Those volunteers yeah. stayed the entire year. They just, oh, and their, year their after time was year. up. Yeah, so I, that's I have one one volunteer who is still with me, who graduated from college <laughs> and started like so. She's been with me almost ten years. Like, but she comes week after week after week. She also, you know, became a teacher, 
Um, and so it's just, it's incredible because again, they just really, they fall in love with our, our kids and yeah, they, 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 yeah, none, none of them, they get hooked, <laughs> which is very fortunate for, for, for our program and very fortunate for the kids. <laughs> so. Yay. <laughs> what is autism? I am aware of what it is, but for the audience, for our audience, what is it? Sure, it's a it's a neurological disorder that affects how an individual processes sensory information and how they communicate. I mean, in in a word, okay, a sentence. That's cool. I love the score and how big it, how long, how big it was. How long did it take you to come up with it? Okay. Um... Well, what, what I did is I started with that song that's at the very end, um, I Will Make Thunder, which is an original song that I heard in 2017. I heard uh, a friend of mine uh, performed it for me at a benefit and that the lyrics, it never, it never left my mind. And it is just absolutely amazing sung by Bonnie Milligan, who's actually on Broadway right now in a show. So I, I took that with my editor from the end because I wanted to end with that anthem because it embraces the studio, it embraces Bonnie's message, it just, and the movie. And then we just worked backwards and we just found, I actually, we hired individual musicians to fill in the parts to lead up to that. So we just slowly pieced it together, but we actually went from the ending backwards to the beginning and then we just hired people to fill in bits and bobs that we needed but i'm glad i'm i appreciate that you like it i will let them all know it was awesome cool <laughs> thank you are there plans to open studios around the u.s and the world <laughs> well, I do offer um, a, a certification program in my methodology so that um, we can uh, offer it in other places. I do know I've, I've certified a teacher in Greece who's currently teaching it. Um, I've certified them in, in Mexico City and Monterey, Mexico. Um, and uh, I actually had somebody in Croatia. And then we have a, a studio in New York City and then, you know, would be more than willing and and you know, for, for people, the, the, the issue with obviously with the methodology is, is I can't train people how to be, how to un understand ballet technique in a matter of weeks. I mean, you can't come to a class and I can't teach you how to be a ballet dancer in, you know, six weeks. <laughs> so, um, so our, in our certification program, I asked for, for experienced dancers who, who know how to teach ballet technique. And then, yes, I can teach them, you know, what the methodology entails, um, you know, the basics about about you know developmental disabilities and and how to how to help uh, you know access everybody's strength um, and really you know build and and give good ballet technique off of that. So yes, I'm I'm hopeful because I again I do think it really benefits and and throughout the years I've had people email me from like. Canada or from Kansas and been like, oh my gosh, I want to take with you. Um, and they they really haven't been able to because I, I only am in Los Angeles. But so my hope is yes, eventually that it will, will grow out because I, I do want people to have access to it. Luckily though, right now, I mean, and this is one of the good things, I guess, <laughs> that came out of the pandemic is I am offering classes virtually. So now like I do have kiddos from like Costa Rica and kids from Canada and kids from like Iowa, like all over the place right now who are taking with me virtually, which is really, really nice. So I would imagine I'm probably going to continue that because every time I think, oh, I'm not going to teach virtually anymore. I have a lot of people that are like, no. <laughs> so I think I'm going to still continue to probably to do both in-person and virtual classes too for those, those kiddos that don't have a studio right next to them. Well, Bonnie, you when we started, you gave me a a binder with um, right. a breakdown of stuff. So is that what all the teachers would get if they take from you? What do they get? Did, well, there was music and stuff in it from what I remember. Yeah, no, no, so, so yeah, the, I have a whole manual, right? So there's a whole certification manual. It's, uh, it's, uh, 
it, there's a whole process to it, right? Where I, I teach everybody the manual and then I actually have a fully developed curriculum which has choreography and music and props and, and all of my bells and whistles. Um, and so, yeah, there's pre-ballet pre all the way through level five. Um, so yeah, there, there's, a, there's a lot that, well, thank you, Dan. <laughs> there's a lot that, that's involved in the certification. So, and again, the nice thing about the certification is, is right, it's not just geared towards one individual population, right? It's geared towards all kids. So, so whether a kid has a disability or not, they're gonna get a great classical ballet education learning this, this through this methodology. What is ataxia? I know I, know I have it because I have to go me, but I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, ataxia is it's basically just a lack of muscle control, which affects like balance and coordination and, 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 and motor, motor planning and movement, yeah. so. Kind of, I kind of had it. I kind of don't. So, <laughs> I yeah. have some of it, but not a lot of it. So I can control it really well. Yeah, I've I've had kiddos that have had pretty bad ataxia in my classes. Uh, they 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 have a very hard time controlling their movement. But I have to tell you, I do. I have noticed that ballet helps. Yes, it helps yes. with no. It really. I am has had folks that have had some some motor planning, uh, you know, issues and, and just, it helps with range of motion and flexibility and motor control, because I mean, think about when you repeat a, a movement over and over again, it opens the neural pathways, right? And, you know, it, it hel helps with all of those things. And ballet for a lot of my kiddos is really motivating, right? It's much more motivating than going to a physical therapist or an occupational therapist and like, you know, doing the range of motion kind of stuff. For, so for them, you know, they're willing to, you know, work on flexion and extension and all of that kind of stuff, because for them, it's, it's learning how to do a good tendu versus, you know, range of motion, right, or, or physical therapy exercises. So I've had a lot of kiddos that, that have had different, you know, um, mo motor planning issues or, or physical disabilities that have actually really benefited from the class, which is really, really nice to see. I, I specifically remember Sarah. Mm -hmm. I had an, uh, I had a moment with Sarah once that, you know, cause she used to take privates with me too. And cause she has peripheral neuropathy and some other issues. She literally only stands on the side of her foot, right? So none of her, her pinky toe sort of touches the ground, but nothing, none of the rest of her, right? And so for years, I kept saying, push her, like I, I literally physically push her ankle forward and say, you have to feel the floor. You have to get, get, be like hang 10, right? Like you have to get all your toes on the floor. And I remember one moment in class, I was teaching her a private and her ankle just went boom. And she looked at me and I looked at her and her mom looked at me and we all burst out into tears. And she was like, I got it. My brain finally did it. And that was, it was, it was crazy to, to be, like, I feel so privileged to be in that, that the room with her when that happened, because it was, it was just amazing to see her. She just, it, it was like, she was like, I find like my brain, I, I, it finally connected. Um, and that was years of hard work, but I've had a lot of stories about kiddos that like I had one girl who would skip, right? And she could only lift her left leg. So she'd skip, take a step, skip, take a step, skip, take a step. And then, you know, like, I don't remember, like three years into ballet class, we're skipping. And then all of a sudden she's skipping with her right foot and her left foot. And she looks at me, she's like, I got it, you know? And so again, there's just, there's so many of those stories that happen in, in our studio. It's, it's really, it's really amazing. They're small, they're like small little miracles, but it's all coming about because of the kid's determination and the kid's ability to just be like, I want to learn this. And, and it's just them being really tenacious <laughs> and determined. So. Yeah. It also takes a great teacher. I love how you were strict and sweet. How did you, how did you manage to pull that off? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's because I have super high standards, right? And ballet, ballet is a strict art form, right? Um, I think any 
any teacher of the arts, uh, just like any really good coach, right? Uh, any good teacher is, has that high level of standards and there, there, it, there is a, you are a, you're strict, right? That there's certain things that just, you know, aren't acceptable to do in the ballet class. And so I just am sure that I, I make sure that I keep those standards while maintaining a level of compassion and humanity. So. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you have to ask my, my kids how I how how well that manage it, how well I balance that. So typically, how long does it take to plan a recital? Generally, it takes about six months. Um, I generally have an idea of what I want to do, and then you know. Um, you know, picking the music, costumes, all of that kind of stuff, the theme of it um, is usually takes me about a month or two. And then teaching the dances, um, I start teaching them in, in class uh, probably a good three to four months before we actually do the, 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 the class uh, or the recital. And so, um, and I, again, I also use a lot of bells and whistles with my recitals, right? Like I film all of the dances so that the kids can practice them at home. Um, I make sure that I break everything down for them. I'll, I'll use visual props and things as well so that they can really understand and incorporate what they're doing. Um, you know, pairing them with the right volunteers and making sure that the, the volunteers have the right tools, like they know how to handle them should there be a crisis on stage um, and what to do all of that. And again, having that kind of high expectation makes the, the show super successful. But I'd say about six months is what I generally need. Um, we generally, um, again, prior to the pandemic, we put on a spring show and a fall show every year. That is awesome. What is a token economy? Oh, a token economy. It's basically a reinforcement schedule. I mean, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a behavioral tool uh, that a lot of uh, behaviorists use. Um, but basically, it's it's a reinforcement tool to get them through the class, right? Generally, what um, when you have so, because I mean, classes are fifty minutes long, right? Yeah, so it is a. Um, it is a, a reinforcement reinforcement tool that I use, right? Because 50 minutes is a long time, especially with little kiddos, to wait to get the big reinforcement at the end. So it's just basically a reminder that like, look, you get this sticker and you get all the stickers on the chart and then you get to go to Target with your mom or you get ice cream at the end of class. So it's really helping those kiddos that might be really anxious and might wanna escape from class or kids that, are just, you know, the class clown and want all the attention, right? And have a hard time focusing. Those token economies sort of help them be like, okay, I'm still on task. I'm still on task. I know what's going on and I know what I can do. So, where can we watch this beautiful film? Oh, gosh. Uh, it's available on Amazon Prime, it's on Apple TV. It's on iTunes. It's on, we got it on Google Play. And it's on uh, Venmo and YouTube. Just type in the title, Everybody Dance, and it'll, uh, on whatever one of those platforms that you, you have, and you'll find it. Is there any social media that we can follow? Yeah, on Twitter, it's Every Dance Doc, D-O-C, Every Dance Doc. And on Instagram, it's everybody dance doc. All right, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. This was wonderful. Yes, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. All righty, take care. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. day. You Thanks. too. Thanks. <laughs>